what we're going to do today is um, talk to you a little bit about what the Microsoft Teams platform is um, and, and why you should care about it. Um, assuming you do care about it, we'll talk about where you can get started, how you can build and test applications on Teams, um, and then how you can publish and manage them. So apologies if this is a little bit, um, a little bit corny. This isn't my deck, but I wanted to keep it in here. So Satya Nadella said to us um, in, in his book a few years ago that um, you join Microsoft not to, not to be cool, but to make other people cool. And we think that this resonates really, really well with, with Teams and the developer platform. Um, the, the developers that are embracing Teams and using the extensibility features are helping other people inside their organizations to really like, make a difference and empowering them to get on with their jobs and, and to make those jobs easier or to find out new scenarios that they couldn't do before. So something that we'd like to kind of keep in mind as we go on through the session is, you know, what, what is it that I can empower other people to do inside my organization by building on top of the Teams platform? So as we said, you know, Teams, Teams is a platform. One of our four pillars is customization and extension. And Microsoft is a platform company. You know, your, your success is our success. We want to make sure that we're giving you the tools that you need to be able to, to, to build on these products that, that we create. And we want to make sure that these products are, are right for people. So when we think about customization and extension, we start off thinking about our, you know, our, normal, um, our normal apps, um, our Microsoft apps that, that we all kind of know and use every day. So things like um, you know, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, but also Power BI, Forms, Planner. And then we layer on top of them our partner applications. So we've got about 250 um, applications in the team store right now um, where people can go and they can use third-party non-Microsoft tools. And we think that's, that's really important. You know, we don't want to live in a world where everything is Microsoft. We know that people use a series of other products in their day-to-day -day lives. And we want to make sure that they're able to use them inside Teams as well and make sure that they're really getting the best out of those products. They don't have to context switch all the time, jumping between different websites or you know, jumping out to a product, having a conversation in Teams, jumping back into the product again to, to actually action something that was decided inside that chat. And then finally, the layer on top, which is, which is what we'll talk about a lot today, is um, organizational applications. So the kind of applications that you're using inside your, you know, inside your organization on a day-to-day -day basis. So holiday booking tools or line of business applications. How do we get them into Teams as well? So that we're not just capitalizing on the Microsoft products and the third-party partner products, but also ones that you could be building inside your org. And obviously, Microsoft Teams brings all this together. You're using all of those applications through the, through the one product. So as I said, we've got 250 plus Teams apps available um, in, the, in the marketplace right now. Um, if you want to go and explore them, feel free to go and do that. Um, they're all available by clicking on the store and, and installing them. If, if you're not able to get them, then please talk to your IT admin and find out you know, why not? Um, often what we find is that um, one of the things that people do turn off in the product is the extensibility features, so the ability to create your own apps or to, um, or to use third party apps. And then people come to us and they say, well, Teams can't do this and this and this. And we say, well, no, actually it can. It's just that your organization's chosen to turn that off. So um, work with them to, um, to understand, you know, what, what could be used and what the ramifications of that might be so that you can start exploring some of these things. So, question, you know, what's, what's in it for me? Why would I want to build applications on Teams? So first of all, we, we think about Teams being, you know, the fastest business app in Microsoft's history. We've got um, 155 million Office Online users um, today. 420,000 uh, organizations are using Teams. If you're following the announcements from Enterprise Connect yesterday, that's actually now up to 500,000. And you'll also see that we've got, I think, 91 or 92 um, of the Fortune 100 companies using Microsoft Teams. So, so there's, there's a massive um, um, push with our customers at the moment to, to be using this product. We're seeing that um, we're getting a lot of people using it. We're getting a lot of great feedback about the product. And to be able to harness some of that traction with the product so that you can you know, make it make it better, make it more sticky by bringing in your own applications. That's something that we'd really like you guys to explore. So when we think about building for Teams specifically, obviously, you know, 
these, these millions and millions of users who are out there in the, in the industry, if you're a partner, you're, you're really expanding your commercial reach. You're taking advantage of the momentum that we've got right now to build your own solutions into the product. You can quite easily integrate existing um, applications into the product. We'll, we'll look at that a little bit later, but we basically think about Teams integration as a very thin layer over the application that you've already built or someone has already built for you. So it's not a great deal of effort to capitalize on, on building these products and um, these applications into the product. And then you can also extend functionality. So another thing that we'll look at is that you, know, you, can, you can put your, your application into the product, you can, you can distribute it um, via, via Teams, um, but you can also extend its functionality. You can, you can change the um, user experience mechanisms that people use to interact with your product and to make it a, a little bit more um, um, adaptable for the way that users want to work. So be it through UI or through speech or through tabs, for example. And also, when we think about Teams as a platform, we think about that as a delivery mechanism. So I have customers who right now have an HR app that they want to build as, as a web app that they have on their, on their PCs, but they also want to have an Android version. They also want to have an iOS version. So they've got to think about all of the, um, the development that needs to go into maintaining those. Whereas when we talk to them about, well, you know, why don't you build an app on top of Teams? You can take exactly the same APIs that you used to use um, to, to build the app before, but you can deliver it through, through a Teams app, then obviously suddenly it works on the web, it works on the desktop, it works on their phones as well. So it's, it's a really good delivery mechanism. And then finally, from a management point of view, um, IT pros in the room will be pleased to know that there's a lot of management that you can do around apps. So I said earlier that we see that IT often turns off the functionality of, of um, third party or, or custom apps. Um, but that also means that you can give some quite granular um, policies for your users to make sure that they're only getting the apps that you've approved as, as a company. So if we think about um, you know, what, what can we do with that application or service? We start with your, your app and, and service up at the top there. So this could be built by you, could be built by a partner. And then we can start expanding out how we can integrate that service into Microsoft Teams. So like I said before, it's not just one canvas. There are different ways of interacting with these applications. You know, we can, we can have a tab where you view that application as if it was a website. We can have connectors which pull information automatically from that application or service into a channel in Teams and, and let you know what's going on. So there's a push from the, from the outside world in. We can use adaptive cards to summarize the information. It doesn't just have to be text-based. It can be a very rich, um, summary that's coming in from, from the outside world into Teams, and then you can respond to it. We can use bots. So with the Microsoft Bot Framework, one of the options that we have is to enable the, the Teams channel as a, as a delivery mechanism. And once we're using bots, we can have a one-to-one a, you know, -one or one-to-many interaction between your backend system um, and a user through Microsoft Teams. Messaging extensions are the opposite of connectors. So rather than the connector pushing information from your service into Teams so that I can see it, I could actually go into um, to start a new conversation and I can pull information from your service. And I can, you know, I, I could pull a summary for a task, for example, and I can push that out to a user and say, hey, can you update me on this task? So again, a really powerful mechanism that often people don't think about when they're thinking about a Teams app, but it actually changes the way that people are interacting with your service, because suddenly you're putting conversation around that service rather than it just being a data point. And then finally, tapping into notifications. So notifications that people are used to inside Microsoft Teams um, to get updates if their app mentioned or if someone replies to them, we can take advantage of those as well to remind people that they need to do a task or to let them know that something in a third party application has changed. So let's look at an example. So Trello is one of the um, third party partners that we work with. So if you haven't seen Trello before, it's a task, task management system. Um, and we've created an app with Trello. So that app lets us do a couple of things. The first is um, a connector. So as I talked about before, that's our push. So when something happens in the, in the outside world in Trello, I can get a notification from Trello right inside my channel to say, hey, a task has been assigned to you. And then I can do something with it. You know, I can, I can either interact with it directly um, in, inside Teams, and I can add notes to it. I can at mention somebody and say, hey, I've just had this task. Can you help me with this? I can 
Let me push it to someone else and say, oh, this task isn't for me, can someone else pick it up for me? And we can change it right there and then inside the application. I've got a bot, so I can interact with, um, with the Trello bot to, um, to ask you questions about my task or to, to reassign tasks. And again, what you'll see here is that we're not just using plain text. You know, I don't have to say, hello, Trello bot, please reassign task 159 to Stuart. You know, I, I, I can ask for a task, I can get a rich UI, and I can interact with it there and then. I can click on the buttons, I can see a summary, I can see pictures. It's a very rich, interactive um, platform where we can guide conversations as well as just saying to people, you know, here's, here's my bot, ask me things, and I'll, I'll see if I can do it. And then finally, we have a tab inside Trello as well. So... Um, you know, I can interact with, with separate tasks, so the bot or the connector, but I can also have access to a, um, to a UI similar to a web UI, um, where I can get a summary, for example, of all the tasks that are assigned to me in swim lanes. I can interact with them. Again, right there in, uh, inside Teams. So I don't have to keep switching out to my third-party application. I can if I want to. I can, I can expand it to full view, or I can, I can click, you know, pop out to web, and I can interact with it there. But if I choose to, I can very quickly go in and have that, that team context around me. So a couple of examples um, that, that we've, we've been working with, um, just if you'd have a look at as well. So as you can see here, we've, um, we've been working with EDMI. We've um, created, well, we've taken advantage of um, features such as tabs, adaptive cards. And similarly for, for HCL, we're looking at bots, we're looking at adaptive cards. So we're seeing a lot of... Um, a lot of different use cases in, in our customers where, you know, they might come to us and say, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Um, maybe it's something we haven't thought of yet. Um, but often, you know, they, they've got a great use case. They've got a great idea. But once they start thinking about it in a team's context, they can actually do, do so much more. An example from inside Microsoft, which um, isn't actually one of my favorites, and I'll explain why. Um, so we've, we've got a bot. It's, a, it's an IT support bot. You can see here that um, you know, I, can, I can say a command, create a ticket, I get a response back. I can say, OK, this is what's wrong. My VPN is not working. Um, and then I, I get a, a rich card coming back at the end of it. Now, now that's great. You know, it's it's good, to, good to interact with a bot. But I think a lot of people tend to think about Teams development as, as this and only this. So they, you know, they think, right, bots are one-to-one. -one. Um, they don't think about TAMs, they don't think about messaging extensions, they don't think about any of these things. Um, because for such a long time we've had the bot framework and people think about bots. Now, bots are great, you know, they're, they're a, a great way to be interacting um, with, with a system. But what's interesting to think about is, you know, what else could you do? And also, rather than just this one-to-one -one scenario that you see here, what happens if I put that bot inside a team and then everybody can see it? So an example for you would be a frequently asked questions bot. You know, it's, it's great if I can go and ask a bot one-on-one, -on -one, like 100 top questions that I have inside my organization, but no one else gets to see the answers. So, you know, I've got to ask the right question. I've got to kind of think about, okay, what, what is it I want to know? What, does, what can the bot help me with? Whereas if I ask that context, if I ask that bot that question in the context of a team, then actually, as a team, collectively, we learn so much more because we all see the answer to those questions. And we can also all chip in. So, you know, if I ask a question and the bot gives me a generic answer, that's great. But, you know, my, my colleague can then write back and say, well, actually, Stuart, have you thought about doing it this way? And you're actually encouraging teamwork by, in, by incorporating that, that bot into the, the, into the team itself. That's something worth thinking about as well. And then the other thing that, um, that we often think about um, inside Microsoft is how do we use Teams for, for DevOps? So, I work on the Teams engineering team. We are a team that uses Teams to build Teams. So we've got a, um, a massive team with, with hundreds of channels, um, and we use that to build the product. So you know there are plenty of third-party tools that we support for developers to, to use Teams for their DevOps, but also we're able to do things like have daily stand-up meetings inside a channel. So you know maybe, the, maybe a particular development area might have a daily stand-up, but everybody inside the team gets to see what's going on. So, you know, I get to, to sit in on a stand-up that's going on in a particular feature that's not mine. That's quite powerful, because it means that I don't have to always be thinking, right, who needs to be in the room all the time? If we transcribe that and we, you know, we, we can then search it, we can find out what decisions were made at what point, who made those decisions. 
we can pull bugs in automatically. If the build breaks, we get a notification. We can swarm over it. We can quickly say, hey guys, what's going on? How do we fix this? And it's instantaneous. You know, I'm not relying on an email coming in, then I have to go out to another app. I can actually have that conversation right there and then. So that was the kind of the why. Let's talk a little bit about, about how. So we kind of think about building apps as a, as a five-step process. So you know, how do we get started? What do we think about at the beginning of the process? What do we want to build? How do we connect up your existing services? How can we do some automation? So it's not just about the application that you're building inside the product, but how can you actually automate the product itself? How can you spin up meetings programmatically? How can you spin up teams programmatically? One of the IT pros, how can you manage teams programmatically? So how can you, how can you not, not give everybody the, the create team button, but actually create a, a form that people fill out and then it goes through an approval process and then a team gets created at the end of it and apply templates and things like that. And then adding comms, so some new features that we um, that we released recently allow you to, you know, add comms in to actually dial into a bot and have a conversation with that bot. And finally, what are your options for publishing at the end of that, either as a partner publishing something to the community, or internally in an organisation publishing something into your own um, into your own uh, company app store. So first of all, when we think about um, building an app. Obviously, we, we want to start at a use case. So it's important to get a, a well-defined use case to understand what it is that we're building, why we're building it, how our end users are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you know, importantly, what, what are we trying to optimize? You know, are we building this for the sake of it, or have we actually got a well-defined problem that we're trying to optimize? And then what enhancements can happen by, by us introducing these new experiences inside Teams? So you know, maybe we've got a holiday booking tool right now that we use inside our organization. I can, I can add an icon to that inside Teams with a tab, and everyone goes, oh, great, cool, now I can, I can get to my holiday booking tool inside Teams. You know, so what? What else could we do? Could we look at layering on a bot on top of that so that rather than me going into my tool, selecting the date, I can say to the bot, like, at holiday bot, please book me two weeks holiday from next Tuesday. And it, it goes off, checks with my manager, my manager says fine, it comes back and says, yes, job done. Um, could I get a notification when my manager approves that or denies it? You know, there's lots of things that we could do in there that actually increases the user experience above and beyond just having a new channel to access the app through. And again, to think about, you know, what, what sort of tools might people use on a daily, weekly, monthly cadence? You know, the holiday booking tool, you know, maybe I use that Every, every week, every month. But actually, there are things that I'm probably going to be doing every day. You know, my, my timesheet. What's on at the cafe today? You know, what am I going to have for my lunch? Um, how do I find employees? Has anyone seen the WhoBot inside a product? No, okay. So a couple of people. So what WhoBot does is um, it uses the Microsoft Graph to find out information about my colleagues. So obviously public information, nothing, nothing um, dodgy there. But um, the WhoBot knows all of the teams that I'm in. So the WhoBot knows um, what people are talking about in the teams that I'm in. So if I'm going to say, like, at WhoBot, who knows about Ignite Amsterdam, then the WhoBot can come back with recommendations of, of who to talk to based on conversations, documents that are being worked on. Um, similarly, because the WhoBot has access to my network and knows who I regularly talk to and who's in my team, chances are the WhoBot's going to tell me somebody to get in touch with about Ignite Amsterdam who is already in my network. So I don't have to go out and buy a coffee for someone new. I can just call my friend up and say, hey, you know a bit about Ignite Amsterdam. Can we have a chat? So being able to build on top of um, the, um, the Microsoft Graph um, and to you know, think about how we can augment um, the kind of tasks that people might do every day or every week or every month. That's something to, to consider when you're thinking about what you could build out. And the other thing is, you know, what context are you going to build that in? So we talked a little bit earlier about the difference between a frequent asked questions bot that is mine, lives one-to-one lives -one with me, or being part of a team. But it's important to think about, um, you know, where, where does this app live? Is this an app that makes sense to live inside a team or inside a channel? So, for example, the Trello app we looked at earlier, um, we, you know, I, I have a, I would have a very different view if that Trello app is installed inside my my development team. You know, we'll, I'll be seeing a view of 
everything that people are doing and all the tasks that we've got relating to that, that particular program, that particular team. But if I looked at that app as a personal view, I'm probably not going to see what everybody else is doing. I'm probably going to see a cross-team um, view of that. I'll see all of my tasks across my different teams. So it's important to think about, you know, is this team context or is this a personal context? And then again, chat. You know, are we just looking for something lightweight, easy, chatty that I can have a one-to-one -one chat with? Or are we looking at something a little bit meatier where we've got access to things like the tabs and the Compose extensions? And then once we've thought that through, um, we would encourage you to, you know, have a play with App Studio. So App Studio is, a, is an application which, um, which we created, lives in the App Store, and that helps you build apps. So within App Studio, we have um, a couple of tabs. So it's a, it's a Teams app, so it, you know, it's got tabs inside it. Um, one of the tabs that we, that we have um, is um, a card editor. So we, I'll, I'll go into a bit of details about cards in a minute, but, um, but we give you the ability to easily create cards. It spits out some code that you can go and put in your application to create a card. Um, we've also got um, a control library. So if you wanted to build a tab, you can use our controls. And that tab would look quite Teamsy. So you know, it feels like it fits very much into the application. And then the, the final thing we have is this manifest editor. So the idea is that I can go in and create a, an app manifest very, very easily um, with, within this um, App Studio Builder. And all a Teams app is, is, is a manifest, right? It's a, you're, you're taking a bot, you're taking a tab, you're saying, yeah, that's, that's going to be a personal tab, that's going to be a, a team bot. Here's some hint text for the team bot. This is the bot ID. I've already created it in Azure. So, you know, we're just pulling together different things into this manifest, and the App Studio helps us build that manifest. So we can see here that what I'm doing is I've, I've put in some details about the particular app, and then I've gone in and I've said I want to add a bot to this. I can create a new bot, or I can go to an existing bot. And again, it just pulls, pulls straight out of Azure. It will say, look, these are all the bots they have available because you've built them already. Um, pl plug me in and then, then we're good to go. So the second thing to think about is how do you connect to your service? So let's assume that you've got your service that's already existing, like, like the holiday booking tool, for example. How do we plug into that? So there are different ways. So we talked a little bit before about integrating a bot service. So if you've already got a bot, we can, we can plug that into Teams, we can have a channel conversation, we can have a one-to-one -one conversation with it. We can also think about a more structured interaction. So we talked before about uh, messaging extensions. So this is me going into my, um, um, into my application and pulling information from my service and then injecting it into Teams th through a card. So it's a different mechanism that we, can, that we can interact with. And finally, obviously, we talked about tabs as well. So we, can, um, we basically have an iframe which we can take advantage of um, and, and pull content in that way. So you can see here, I, I mentioned about things looking Teamsy. You know, this, this looks like a very well integrated application within Teams. You wouldn't really know if you were, if you were an end user, you wouldn't really know this wasn't part of the product because they've used the control libraries and everything fits very, very well. So interactive cards, um, as I said before, is a way that we can think about um, bringing a little bit more interaction, a little bit better user experience into our applications. So rather than just replying with plain text, um, we can send through a, a very rich um, card as a summary, um, as a list, as a carousel control, as a form, um, and we can, we can use them to get feedback. So it's that we introduced recently um, our adaptive cards. Adaptive cards basically let us um, change the UI based on what's selected. So we can see here that um, you know, I, could, I could go in and want to fill out a particular card to send information back to my service. And rather than using a bot where you know, I, I say, OK, I want to do this, the bot says, OK, choose from these options. I say, OK, these are the options. It comes back again and says, all right, which ones do you want to do? It says, do you want to do that? I say, yes, I confirm. Um, you know, that's, that's very messy. Um, with interactive cards, we can send just one UI, we fill that out, it changes based on what we're filling out, and then we send it through to the bot service and says, okay, cool, job done. And then similarly, we can also use um, a new feature called task modules. So this basically is a modular approach where we take over the screen inside Teams and we just give that user a form. So the bot might initiate a task to be filled out, for example, and then we'll go in, we'll fill in that form, we'll click submit, and that will get sent back to the service. And then again, we come back to, to those Compose extensions. So behind the scenes, this is just a bot. 
So again, you know, you've got maybe an existing bot, or maybe you've created a bot service as a way of interacting with your existing service or application. Um, but that bot could be conversational, as we saw before. It could send some, um, some cards through to you that you could interact with. Um, or it could be driven by, um, by the messaging extension. So I've, I've clicked down here on one of those little icons for my application. It's brought up a list for me. I've selected an item from that list, or I've searched for an item in that list. And then I can, I can click on an item, and that will send a rich card into the, um, into the Compose window. And then I can write a message around it. So for example, there's a bug in my application. I want to go and find that bug from Jira. I pull that in. I write a message to my colleague. I say, at Frank, what's going on here? Can you fix this? And we send it straight through to Frank. So it's a really nice way of, of interacting with that particular user. So here's a summary of, um, of um, you know, the, the platform elements that we have to work with. Um, so these are what we kind of think about as those, as those UI elements um, that you can interact with teams through for your service. The other thing to think about is, um, is what can we do behind the scenes as well, which is kind of the next, the next step. Um, you know, we've got these UI elements that we can work with, but actually by tapping into things like the Microsoft Graph, you're able to do things um, like find out information about you know, what people are doing, what documents they're working with. Um, you can interact directly with, with Teams as, as a service. So you can spin up a new team, you can create a new channel, you can insert someone into the team, remove them from the team. So it's not just about those, those UI elements, you can also think about, you know, what, what can I, where can I get my data from? Similarly, you've got all of the cognitive services inside Azure that you can take advantage of as well. So if I wanted, to, for example, to create an application that polled Twitter for comments about my organization, rather than just pumping that straight into my, into my channel inside Teams, I could actually run it through um, a um, analysis tool to find out what the sentiment in that is. So every negative comment, for example, I could send to my colleague, every positive comment I could send to me, so that we can like, go and deal with that. So next step to think about is, is that automation piece. You know, how do we automate teamwork? So as I said before, the, um, the Microsoft Graph um, is basically a massive, massive graph that is, um, you know, knows all about the interactions that we have within, um, within the Microsoft product set. And one of the elements that we take advantage of is, the, is the, the Teams section of that. So Teams, channels, members, apps, tabs, threads, messages. And in doing so, we're able to do a number of things. So we can set up a team, we can provision that team, we can create channels, we can have members, we can install applications automatically when we're creating those teams. We can then manage that ongoing, so we can pull people out, put people in, um, and then we can, we can do things within that team. You know, we can read what's going on, we can see what's happening inside those channels, and we can act accordingly. So something that we've worked on with um, an airline partner who's one of our customers is um, that we pull in a flight manifest every time there is a flight, and we spin up a team for that flight. So when, um, so a couple of days before, flight's due to take off, the ground crew, the cabin crew will all be pulled into this team. There'll be channels, there'll be applications, it will link to their, to their existing line of business services. And they were able to communicate and get updates on things like the flight status, you know, whether the bags have been checked in, things like that. And they will swarm around this to make sure that the flight gets off the ground and, and then lands successfully at the destination. And then afterwards, that, that team disappears. And then we rinse repeat for the next flight. So there's a lot of things that we can do around actually interacting with the product itself, rather than thinking about what, what could we plug into that product. Question. Yep. Uh, what happens with the data? If you spin up a team, it lives for a week, um, there might be important information that needs to be archived. Mm -hmm. Sure. So question was, um, what happens to the data in that scenario that I just talked about? So, you know, we might have to archive data, for example. Um, so it's really up to you. So, um, you know, we, we have a, a pretty good control set around what we can do inside that team. So, so we, we can, for example, list out messages from, from a team. Um, so if we wanted to export that data, we could. 
if you wanted to incorporate a bot into that scenario and you use the bot to log anything that's important, then you could do it that way as well. So, you know, you, you control the, the data flow in that context. And if you wanted to, to pull something out and keep that for the future, then you could. In that particular scenario, um, I, I think when, given that it's quite transient, what we try to do is we encourage people to think about a, um, a Teams application as this is where the data is stored. So for example, in healthcare, like when, when, we, when we're working with our healthcare customers, we don't want to make decisions inside Teams and have that decision point actually inside the product. We want to, you know, we'll have a conversation about the decision, but then we're still storing it inside that patient record system. So again, with the Trello example, you know, I, if, if, I, if I have a task and, and I reassign it to somebody, I'm assigning that task in Trello. I might be doing it through Teams, but it's Trello that has the data. If I just write to someone, you pick this one up, and then we don't ever reassign it, obviously it will get complicated later on when you look back in Trello and it, and it hasn't been reassigned. It's actually worth saying, for, for q and I'm going to try and finish a bit early and then stick around, because we've got no mics in the room, so it's quite, quite hard to do that. But um, yeah, we'll have about 10 minutes at the end, so feel free to come down to the front and we can have a chat. Um, so the API um, is, is a RESTful API, um, so we can, um, we can go through and interact with that service. I see here that we're, um, that we're querying, for example, um, channel messages. So we're getting back a, a list of messages here from a particular channel. We can see that we, we get some JSON back and then we can, we can go and do something with that. So the next thing to think about is, um, is rich comms. So we've talked a little bit about how we might interact with chat, how we might you know, have compose extensions, tabs, the kind of the UI elements. But what if we want to take advantage of things like calling, things like voice, meetings? So we can do that through the Graph API too. So if we go back to that, that Graph API that we've just met, and then we um, specifically zoom into a section of this. So the communications features and specifically on programmable voice and video. By, by interacting with um, either with cloud services to, you know, to, to set up a meeting, invite people into a meeting, for example, or with a bot to actually directly interact with that bot, you can get some really um, rich experiences um, for your customers from, from a voice point of view as well. So you know, we can control meetings and calling flows by interacting with the Graph API. We can access media and have things play back to us. Um, and we can take advantage of, um, of the fact that you know, we, we can call into teams from anywhere, from around the world. You know, we've got that infrastructure there, so why not use that infrastructure to access some of our services through a voice enable bot, for example? What we'll do is we'll zoom into call control. So within the call control section, you know, there are three, three basic things we think about. So we've got our basic calling. So if somebody, you know, calls that bot, you know, how do I receive a call? How do I answer a call? How do I place a call, transfer it, hang it up? <coughs> what can we do inside meetings themselves? So, you know, if we think about a crisis situation, how could I automatically spin up a team using the Graph API with all the people that need to be pulled into that, to that incident? But then also, how could I spin up a meeting programmatically and pull people into that meeting so that we can have a voice conversation? And then finally, if I'm, you know, if I have called up a bot, for example, and that's my, my interaction mechanism, how do I interact with that bot then? You know, do I, do I take advantage of the raw audio stream or video stream, or do I ask the service to do it for me? You know, maybe I've got an understanding of what I've been asked through, through voice recognition, through DTMF tones, but you know, how do I actually make that bot then say something back to me? And we can do all of that stuff um, through, through this API as well. So the final thing to think about is, you know, we've, we've built our, our application or we've built our service that, you know, maybe spins up teams, interacts with existing services through teams, et cetera, et cetera. But what do we want to do with that? So there are a couple of things that we, um, that, you know, we can think about to, to really make sure that we're publishing this in the, in the right way and the right people have access to them. So first of all, we want to, we want to test this out. So if we activate side loading, what that lets us do is, um, as a developer, I can you know, import my application into Microsoft Teams and I, I can test it out. 
Um, and then once I've decided that you know, this, this application is working well, I'm going to talk to my IT admin. Um, and that IT admin could give me permission to insert that application into our internal store. So again, there are two ways of doing this. So we've got our, our Teams app store, which is where a, a partner traditionally would, would publish one of those apps, the 250 apps that we've launched already. That's the process they've gone through. And then we've got a tenant app catalog. So you can see that, oh, no, you can't, not on that one. Um, so we can see on this slide that um, you know, I've, got, I've got Microsoft listed there in the middle. Now that's not, that's not a public facing um, list of apps by Microsoft, that is, that's our tenant. So if I publish to, to my tenant, that's something that everybody inside the organization is going to see, it's gonna be listed under my tenant name as well. So it looks to the end user like you know, they're still going to an app store, they're just getting an app from, from the outside world, but actually they're able to see your specific line of business apps that you've, you've created as well. And then we've also got a lot of ways that we can um, that we can manage these applications. So you can see here this slide kind of summarizes everything. You know, we've got our capabilities, we've popped them into application manifest, and then we've imported that either you know as a side load because I'm testing, um, imported as you know, as a as a team app or a, or an app that everybody can use, um, or or a line of business app. Um, but then we can control how that gets delivered to people. So. Administrators are able to go into um, um, into the Teams and Skype um, portal, and they're able to control how apps are delivered to people. So they can say, I, "I'm quite happy to have all Microsoft first-party apps, for example, but I don't want to have any third-party apps." Or from the third-party apps list, these are the ones I do want. If a new one becomes available, I want that to be automatically added by default or I don't want that to be automatically added by default. So they have a lot of control around that, which they can do at the moment. And then we're going to be seeing some um, features coming in the future whereby I would be able to control as an IT admin an application policy. So for example, I could say this group of users are allowed to use this application, whereas this group are not allowed to use that application. And we can get in some quite granular details for that as well. And then this slide check kind of shows where we're where we think about our investments in the future. So you can see here that we've got that um, um, those app policies that I just talked about. And so we're making changes into the admin portal to make it um, to make the policies more granular for your for your IT admins. Um, we're also um, introducing setup policies. So when I create a team, I could, for example, say I want this this team to have this particular app. Um, installed automatically. We can do that right now through the graph, but we're going to make that easier to do moving forward as well. Um, similarly, I can, I can push out um, an application, a, a line of business application to anybody in my organization. So I'll actually be able to say, right, in my, in my left rail, I want to have a Mike and Toso app pinned right to the, to the team's desktop so that I can access that really easily. And we can, we can push that out to everybody if we want to. And then finally, um, we'll, we're adding more control over you know, development itself. So that side leading piece, who's allowed to do that? And then getting information back again. So enabling app analytics so you can really get an understanding of who's using your app and, and how they're using it. So just wanted to put these up on the end. So you know, this kind of summarizes the things that we've talked about um, today in terms of what you can build and how you might go about building them. So the things to think about around you know, what what is it I'm trying to build? How can I extend my existing internal application? Where am I going to put it? Is it a personal context or is it a team context? If it's a team context, you know, great. What, what, what extra functionality does that give me? Am I just using a tab or am I using a bot? But actually in using that bot, am I going to take advantage of the rich UI that I'm able to, to use now? Am I going to take advantage of notifications coming in automatically for me into Teams, either in my activity feed or inside my channel? Am I going to take advantage of messaging extensions so I can pull information out of my tool and have a conversation around it with people inside my team? Am I going to use the Graph API to actually automate some of the team creation for me? You know, that could be great as an IT pro tool to enable templating or to enable a, you know, a scenario like instant management or or the flight scenario, or a number of different scenarios where you might want to spin up a team programmatically. So there's lots of things to think about there. Mm -hmm.
<coughs> and finally, you know, could your could your application be the next one that we that we see in the store? So we've got a couple of um, resources available for you. Um, I said before, I think that these slides should be made available after the session, but feel free to, to take some photos of that um, if you want to go and explore further. And like I said, again, we've got, got some time left at the end, so if anybody does want to come and ask any questions, feel free to come down and, and we, can, we can have a chat about some ideas. And finally, I've got a load of stickers here too, so if anyone wants some team stickers, come and, come and help yourself. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you.